All right, welcome to lesson number three, animations. This will be part one of a two-part series. First, uh, go ahead and open up uh, Adobe After Effects for this lesson. We will start another clean new project. Go ahead and close the welcome window. Before we get started, I'd like you to file, save as, to put this in a folder for lesson three in your After Effects stuff. I'm going to right click and make a new folder and call it lesson three so that I can double click on that to save it here and call this lesson three part one. Uh, let's just call it lesson three. We'll continue in this lesson for part two. Lesson three. Save. Okay. First thing I want to do is bring in a video clip so that we can take a look at some things you can do with animations. So let's import a file. Let's go ahead and get the file from your basic training folder. and It's called Tino Rays. Open that and you will have the video clip in your project panel. Let's do an automatic comp by dragging it to the make comp button. So again, it's set to the length of the video and the settings of the video itself. So first, I wanna take a look at some things we can do with uh, the controls inside of After Effects to become more familiar with them. For example, I showed this in lesson two that if you hit the triangle, on any file that is in the composition, you will have a transform properties. Let's open that, and you'll again see the items that you saw in Premiere for position, scale, rotation, opacity, and anchor point. Um, for example, now if we go ahead to the rotation, and I were to grab the second numbers here and begin rotating, you might notice that it rotates at the very center, like a thumbtack is put right in the middle of Tino's back. Okay, so control Z to go back to zero. That's because the anchor point is in the dead center of Tino, Tino's back. So there are two ways we can fix this or adjust this and make it anchor maybe from his head. One is to change the anchor point, which moves the video to an area or the center to an area that is now in his hat, that little marker for the anchor point. If I rotate now, it's gonna rotate there. Another way to do this is to go to your toolbar here at the top, and there's a pan behind, which is the anchor point tool. If I click on that, I can simply drag this anchor point around and put it somewhere so that when rotations are applied, they're applied with the new anchor point pin. So that's one thing to consider. Now, when you're done trying something like this so you understand anchor points, you can reset everything to go back to normal. You can also right click on any one of the settings and reset just that setting. I'm going to reset all of them to put it back in the center with the anchor point in the center again. Alright, so what else can we do? Well, we can use keyframes, just like in Premiere, to create animations for effects. For example, we can do a basic fade in of this video. So at the very beginning, we could fade it in as uh, we might by adding a cross dissolve in Premiere. Uh, to do that, we will take our opacity, which is set to 100%. I'll go to a point where I'd like it to be faded in by, maybe here, and I'm gonna set the opacity stopwatch. So I have 100% setting this far into the clip. If I go back to the beginning of the clip and bring the opacity down to zero, well now I have a zero keyframe and a 100 keyframe so that it fades in. And that makes for a, a very simple and nice fade in. It's fading in from white at the moment because that's the color of the After Effects background. Uh, we could also have that background be black or any other color we wanted by creating that at the initial startup or going to the comp settings to change, whoops, not new comp, but comp settings where we could change the background color to something else. And now we'd go from red in. So obviously there are some adjustments there that can be made based on the background of the comp. So now that you've got the um, fade in figured out, let's do a move style of a uh, entry instead of a fade in. 
I'm going to reset the opacity. Oop, let's turn off the keyframe first and then reset it to 100. So by hitting the stopwatch it turns off the keyframe. So the keyframes are now gone. Just like the stopwatch will bring in keyframes. We're going to take the video clip and set a keyframe here for position at about I don't know, 10 frames in. You can read your frames over here. I'm in, I'm in 10 frames in right now. You can also zoom in and count the frames and see them. I'm going to go and make a keyframe now for position. Then go back to the home and set the position for just off the screen. Let me slide this thing off by changing this. If you hit shift, it'll go faster. Okay, it's just off screen. And now it'll move in keyframe to keyframe. You can use more than one keyframe at the same time. Let's try and uh, well, let's do this first. Let's go ahead and smooth out the ending. Right now it snaps in because keyframes basically stop abruptly unless you change a keyframe to an easy ease keyframe. I'm going to select the second keyframe and right click on it. Go to the keyframe assistant and use easy ease which smooths out the in or out. You could also use easy ease in or out depending on which direction your footage is animating. I'm just going to use easy ease and now when it stops it stops a little more smoothly. It doesn't stop it slows down in this area before it stops instead of stopping abruptly on this keyframe. So the easy ease smooths things out. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is to let's move the keyframes around which changes the speed. If I move them closer then it's going to move in very quickly. If I move them further apart then it will move in slower. Let's put it back to about the 10 keyframe area. Okay, so we've got this move in figured out now. Let's add some motion blur because it does by the natural eye that line of the video coming in would normally be blurred if you move something in front of your hand, like wiggle your fingers really fast, you'll notice they blur in front of you and that's what our eyes naturally see. So to make this more real, I should turn on the blur button, which in the composition there's a little three balls here in a row that are for motion blur. I turn that on. I also, for the composition, in order for, for motion blur to be enabled, need to turn it on for the composition as well. You can now see there's, gonna, uh, there's a little blur that's attached or applied to the video to make it seem more realistic. Now that it's rendered, the green bar means rendered, if I play it, you'll notice it's blurring in, which is a little more natural. Okay, so what else can we do with this? Well, we could add a little rotation as well. For example, uh, once we get to this keyframe and it's moved in, we'd like it to have rotated in perfectly, which is zeros. So I'll set a keyframe at zeros on the second keyframe area. I'll move back to the first keyframe and I will turn it about, I don't know, 56 degrees, which turns the video about 56 degrees over, which incidentally, if I zoom out, you can notice that the video is turned a little bit, and now it's going to come in and twist because of the rotation that we set. Let's also make the second key frame of this rotation be an easy ease keyframe to have it smoothly slide in. I'm going to go back to fit and now play it. And there it is. It'll run normal once the green has rendered and that's what it looks like. I probably could have moved it off screen just a little more. And to make that adjustment, if I'm on a keyframe with the current time indicator and I make a change, it just changes that keyframe. If I'm in the middle, it'll make a new keyframe for any change I make. As you can see here, I'm going to control Z to undo that. Go back to the first keyframe slide this video off a little bit more so it's not noticeable. Now I'll re-render the clip, turn green, go back and play it again. So that is now using keyframes to animate in any of our basic transform properties along with an easy ease to smooth in the, uh, the stop so it's not so abrupt. And we added a blur as well, uh, both for the item and the entire comp to make that look pretty good. So, um, let's see. 
There are some shortcuts for the transform buttons that make it easier to open up uh, and see these various properties. What I mean here, if I close this down, if you have a composition full of, you know, there are comps that have a hundred different things in it, and to keep opening up each one's transform would fill this timeline too quickly and you wouldn't be able to see what you're working on. So if you want to just open certain things, like maybe to work with scale, simply click on the file and hit the S key on the keyboard for scale. If you hit the T key, that's opacity. T. If you hit the P key, that would be position. If you hit the R key, that would be rotation. So you can quickly make an adjustment or a change at one to one item without expanding all the triangles. You can also make them go away by hitting the same key and it will disappear. You can bring two parameters up at the same time. Let's say I want to do scale and position. Well, if I click on it and I hold down shift and hit S and then P, control, sorry, SP. Okay, that didn't work. Let me try that again. Shift SP. S shift P. Oh, that's how you do it. Hold down, let's clear these off. Hold down the shift key after choosing one. So first let's hold the Let's choose scale, then hold shift and choose P, and you end up getting both of them to appear. So every time you hold shift down, you can add another parameter in order to see more than one at the same time. So that is the main ways to see uh, your various parameters. Another way to see these parameters is by using the U key, which is a key called the Uber key to see all keyframes that have been created. If I hit the U key, anything that has had a keyframe applied to it will open up so I can make further adjustments. This is very helpful for finding your animations since they are all made by keyframes if you want to find just various properties that are keyframed and find them quickly. Hit the U key again and they go away. If you hit the U key twice you actually can see a little bit more but generally U key is to either turn it on or turn off all keyframed properties. Well, that's about it for this first part of the lesson. We will pick this up in part two and go a little bit deeper into animations in that lesson. Don't forget to save your work at this point by going to File, Save As. Uh, file Save. I must have already saved this because we have a Lesson 3 file here, so I can cancel. Another way to save is Control S, which I do often in case this program crashes. We, can, we will see you next time.